Hi, everybody. Welcome in to our Feel Good Friday show. I hope that you have had a wonderful week, and I hope that we can close this week out on a high note. How are you doing out there? It The weather has been crazy, right? I, I don't know where you are, but I, it's been very, I always talk about the weather, right? But it's because it's like the, the one thing that we can all kind of commiserate or uh, celebrate about, <laughs> depending on the circumstances. But um, yeah, the weather here has been kind of weird because it's been like 80 degrees and sunny and then it'll all of a sudden we'll have a little thunderstorm and it'll thunder for a little while and then it will pass on and it will, you know, get get sunny again. Where I live, we don't really do that whole spring thing. <laughs> we go winter, summer, <laughs> just just like that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting. If the sun was shining just a little while ago, now it looks like it's going to rain again. <laughs> so I don't know. Thought I'd mention it, uh, because we do tend to talk about the weather a lot when we very first get started here on all of our shows. Cause like I said, everybody's got weather wherever you are, there is weather. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hello, Ruth. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Martha. Bridget. It's so good to see everybody. Hi, Kirsten. How are you? All right, guys, let's talk about it, shall we? Let's let's get into things. Look at my evil scientist <laughs> finger taps here. So, all right, it is Feel Good Friday, which is my very favorite day of the week. But I do have some housekeeping to attend to before we get into all of that. So first and foremost, uh, I want to encourage you to set your reminders for 4 p.m. Eastern this afternoon. And like I said, that's 4 p.m. Eastern this afternoon for my Art Beads Live. I will be doing a fun um, project where uh, it's kind of Mother's Day inspired. It's one that you guys have seen before, um, but all things are new over on Art Beads. So uh, this is kind of like the updated version of a of a past project that we've actually done together. A uh, little bird's nest earrings. They're super, super cute using some chat glass. Uh, and sparkly things. It's going to be a fun one. So set your reminders for that. Again, that's at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And oh, you guys, I have some very exciting things to report to you. Uh, those of you who have become Patreon members, shout out to all of you. Thank you for everyone who has joined my Patreon. Guys, we are 152 members strong in Patreon, which I had no idea was going to be the outcome. I kind of thought like, okay, well, I'm going to start this Patreon thing and like, oh, I might have 40 or 50 members and it'll be cute and it'll be fun. And it no, you guys. So Patreon's been going on for over a month now and we are up to 152 members. And I hope that that number continues to grow. I am so inspired. Um, if you were with me on this past Tuesday for our live, Sam and I talked about it right at the end of the show, had a lot of people sign up right then um, to really kind of just get it, it, to like create some momentum. So I wanted to mention it again. I'm going to mention it every live. I'll be honest with you, but I do want to mention it again to you guys. So um, if you don't know what Patreon is, a lot of people have some um, some preconceived notions about it and think that it is strictly for YouTube and that is not true. Um, so it started out that it was for YouTube, but it is open to everyone, no matter where you are in the world. Um, it, it makes absolutely no difference. So Patreon, it's an app and it's super easy to use. Sam showed you on um, Tuesday. He like he literally just opened up his phone and did like two or three clicks and that was it. Like it's not complicated. So please don't be afraid uh, to use it. But guys, Patreon, originally I put the Patreon together because I have two very big communities. I have a Facebook community and I have a YouTube community. What I was finding was that in my YouTube community, there are lots of people there that do not do Facebook. You know what I mean? Like they just don't. So they are missing out on the community aspects of this amazing community that I have built. And so they don't get the groups. They don't do the Facebook groups. They're, they're not there for hardwired. They're not there for, you know, uh, straighten your crown. They're, they're, they don't do Facebook. So they don't participate in those groups. And so I wanted to be sure that I was giving my YouTube community something extra just for them. However, 
that being said, it's literally open to anybody. So YouTube, Facebook, it doesn't matter if you don't do any of them. I don't know how you'd be watching me if you didn't, but at, like you don't have to be a member of either one uh, to do Patreon. And what that means is if you are a Patreon subscriber, it is $10 a month and you will get access to exclusive projects. So far, I've been able to upload one project a week. Those projects, like I said, are exclusive to Patreon members. They will not be shown on YouTube. They will not be shown on Facebook. It is exclusive to Patreon subscribers. So those projects are not getting shown anywhere else. The projects are not hard projects, so it's different than hardwired, right? We're hardwired. We really focus on growing our techniques and our skills, and like we work really hard. Patreon, those Patreon projects are different, right? They're very, very different in the sense that I am literally using it as an opportunity to put together just beautiful jewelry that I love. And that makes it so different than anything else, right? We put together just beautiful earrings and necklaces and bracelets. And I'm working on an earrings project coming up for next week. And like, not that I don't make beautiful jewelry everywhere. I, at least I hope that's my goal. But this is an opportunity for you to be inspired. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not, you know, pushing you to Art Beads. I'm not pushing you to Sam's. I'm not pushing you to my shop. I'm literally just getting together with you. It's a pre-recorded project. You can watch it as many times as you want to. And I'm just inspiring you to use beads that you already have, use things that you already have to create pieces that you love. And so far, 152 members in, uh, it seems to be going really well. So if you are thinking about it, if you're thinking about it, I'd like to encourage you to join our Patreon. And of course, the, mem uh, the links to that are here on Facebook and YouTube so that you can very easily get to it. Everybody is welcome. Um, no, no stipulations whatsoever. Um, and once you are a Patreon member, then you have access to my Discord server. The Discord server functions as like a Facebook group, like a Facebook group. It's not Facebook. It is just a, a separate little entity and it's just a, it's basically like a big chat log where you can go and chat with other members of Patreon. You can post pictures, you can play games, you can, you know, it's, it's really just a place to, uh, it's like a community hub to hang out with each other, right? So there you go. That is all about the Patreon. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Going up here. Jen says, I joined to get access to the projects. Exactly. Can we pay for numerous months? Unfortunately, you can't. You have to pay monthly. Or Well, I think you sign up and I think that it gets, because I don't have any control over it whatsoever. Like I don't, I don't have any access to the billing at all. It's not like hardwired where like we have Kathy and um, Bonnie like handling the, the money aspect of it. Patreon handles all of those things itself. Um, and I'm a Patreon member to someone and my my money just gets deducted from my account every month. And of course, you can stop at any time. So anyway. All right, everybody. So let's get into it. Let's get into it, shall we? Um, what was I going to say? <laughs> totally forgot. Oh, 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 oh. Just wanted to mention to you guys as well that I do have affiliate links to both bargain beadbox or beadbox bargains um, and to art beads. And if you guys want to use those affiliate links, those usually get dropped in the comment section as well. Feel free to use those. If you want to shop on either one of those sites, I do get a very small commission off of the sales that you use when you use my affiliate links to any of the businesses that I support. So thank you so, so much uh, to all of you who use those. Okay, now let's get into it, shall we? It is Feel Good Friday. Feel Good Friday is my very favorite day of the week, and I hope it is one of your favorites as well. Feel Good Friday is all about fun and easy instant gratification jewelry. It's all about easy pieces that you can put together yourself and be inspired by. And I make these very, um, I make these very easy for you by creating them in kit form. I make them all in two kits, which are available for purchase over in my Etsy shop. My team is here in the comment section, both on YouTube and Facebook, dropping links directly to those uh, kits so that you can very find, very easily find those, um, or you can just go over to my Etsy shop and shop away. Um, <laughs> 
kissing. <laughs> Uh, the name of the game on Fridays for our Feel Good Friday show is just that. It is all about feeling good. So we don't focus on technique. We focus on easy things. We focus on easy stringing, uh, simple wire wrapping, including simple loops and wrapped loops, um, simple knotting and things like that. I don't want to get you bogged down with technique. I just want you to be able to take the basic skills that you have uh, that you've already learned and use those to create beautiful pieces of jewelry because... Beautiful jewelry does not have to be a representation of every skill or technique that you have ever learned. Took me a long time to learn that lesson, so I'm trying to help you learn that one right now. Uh, you don't have to uh, show off everything you know when you're creating a beautiful piece of jewelry. Sometimes just simple stringing is a wonderful way to put together a beautiful piece of jewelry. So, uh, I, like I said, everything you see in the show today is available as a kit for purchase over in my Etsy shop. And while you're waiting on those to be delivered, hopefully I'm also inspiring you to use things that you've already got in your stash uh, to create some wonderful pieces of jewelry. Now, uh, Feel Good Fridays always start out with two things. We start out with uh, maker mixes. Maker mixes are small batches of beady goodness, things I don't have enough of to create an entire kit out of, um, but I still want to share with you. So it's just a small bead mix. Following those is a true do-it-yourself kit, and I usually have four or five of those. I don't know how many I have in the show today. I think I have one, two, three, four, five. I think I have five of those today. I'm not sure. Um, but these are kits where there are no there are no findings. It's just the beads and maybe a component. Um, and I give you some inspiration, a couple of ideas of what you could do, but ultimately it is up to you. And then I follow those up with the kits that have everything in them, where I've cut the chain, I've cut the leather, I've counted the jump rings, and all of the things are in there. So two very different kinds of kits that are available in our Friday shows. Um, you can have both. You can do one or the other. It is totally up to you, but that is the order that we do things in. So I'm going to get you turned around. We're going to start out with that maker mix for the week. This one is really pretty. I hope that you guys love this one because I am a huge fan of this one. So this one is called our lunar eclipse. <laughs> Not solar eclipse. This is our lunar eclipse uh, maker mix. This one has the color palette here is like pink, orange, purple, black, and navy blue. There is an agate druzy in here. There are check drucks, check rondelles, several check rondelles. There are some of these twisted tube beads, check fire polish, and then these spacers that are actually metallic on the edges, which you can't see because they're laying flat. Uh, some check flowers in here as well. Just a really, really pretty color mix. Um, that again, this is lunar mix. This is the maker mix for the week. So this one doesn't have a project or a, a piece of jewelry that is completely up to you to come up with. But I thought that the color palette was really quite beautiful. So there you go. That is our lunar eclipse maker mix. All right. I'm going to set this to the side. We're going to move on to our true do it yourselves. Now the true do it yourselves, like I mentioned, do not have um, they do not have the findings. I might give you a little inspiration, but there are no findings included. So this one is our teal. I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm trying to find the teal check and agate. I think this one is really, really pretty. So again, just some ideas. You don't have to put it together this way if you don't want to, but I was envisioning as I was putting this one together for you, I was envisioning a Y style necklace because those are always my very favorite to make, but you can put this together however you want to. So I was kind of thinking like this as the drop in the front, right? Like our focal here. And then using the rest of the little agate beads for, let's see, going up the sides, right? And then of course you can always pull if you wanted to make some earrings with like some little clusters. So you could do little cluster earrings to go with this, which I think would be pretty. And then there are some more of these little guys. So you could, you could potentially pop these in between your little beads if you wanted to. 
You can add more beads from your own stash. You could add chain as your length. You could add leather as your length. Like you literally can do anything. You're the creator. I just give you a little bit of inspiration of what I think you could do with these. And then ultimately it is up to you. If I were making my cluster earrings, I'd probably add some more beads to these. How cute would those be, right? So again, totally up to you. I just... Uh, you know, we bored the robot. I know, right? <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm so over it. <laughs> he's gone to sleep now. He's snoring. But um, this one, again, this is the uh, the teal check and agate uh, true do-it-yourself. So no findings involved here. This is just um, some inspiration for you. You literally can put this together however you want to, but this is kind of what I was seeing. So, all right, going to move on to the next. All right, sitting this one to the side. All right, now I've got another one for you guys. This one is our fancy check and butterflies. And I thought this was, look at the color palette. It's just so, so pretty. So I, again, was kind of thinking bracelet, but, uh, you know, it's totally up to you. All right, I was kind of thinking like putting that fancy check bead in the middle. And then putting my butterflies on either side of that and maybe putting like, I don't know, these little check melons, like this little purple check melons in there, right? And then there's some bigger check glass roses in purple. Um, and then you can just really kind of use the beads that are in here to build outwards to create a bracelet if you wanted to or the front of a necklace. You've got enough beads here to make um, earrings with if you wanted to as well. You could actually do like a double strand if you wanted to. You can do little dangles. So if you wanted to like do a couple of little uh, dangles, you could use this guy as a dangle or you could stack him up with some other beads to make some pretty little decorative elements as dangles for the end or whatever. This could be the front of a necklace, could be a bracelet, could be any number of things. You've got two butterflies, so you could technically use the butterflies for uh, earrings if you wanted to. You don't even have to put those into the bracelet. You could just do beautiful earrings with them, right? There are some really soft blues in here and purples. Just a really pretty little a little selection of beautiful beads for you guys. All right. So again, this was the fancy check and butterflies true do it yourself. All right. I'm going to sit this one to the side. <laughs> Chipboard instead of clipboard. That's funny. <laughs> Too funny. All right, next up is our candy check. And this one, I chose that name because they do, it kind of reminds me of candy. You you guys remember, well, you can still get them, candy necklaces, you know, where you can eat the beads. That's what these these rondelles remind me of. I, I love this color palette because I feel like this is such a summertime color palette. And honestly, if I bought this for myself to create with, I would probably add some letter beads to this. Um, I know you guys have seen them. The letter bead bracelets have been around forever, but they have really kind of grown in popularity since um, Taylor Swift came onto the scene and all of her fans have started using them to like, you know, wear with song lyrics or whatever. Um, but I, I don't know if you guys remember or not. When I used to wear these, do you guys remember these? I had this one that said be you and this one that said stay weird and you can see they're starting to fray. I've had them forever. <laughs> and it's funny because I was wearing these way before all of the resurgence in these letter beads like it became super popular again. I would add letter beads to this but that is just me. You do you 100%. You could get a couple of bracelets out of this actually. Uh, it really kind of just depends how you wanted to do it or you could do... Um, you could always do the front of a necklace, but just showing you what these kind of look like when you stack them up, these beautiful rondelles. I just think this is such a nice color palette and there's only two orange beads in here. So you don't have to be super afraid of the orange, but how pretty is that? And then you've also got some metal beads in here as well. And guys, these are check glass, so they're not plastic. I know they look like 
those plastic coney beans beads, but they are 100% check glass. So just, just so you know, if you wanted to do double strand, you could use your little metal beads in between, right? So pretty, like you've got so many options with these. You've got such a fun color palette. You could do double strand, you could do double strand necklace, double strand necklace, you could do earrings if you wanted to. A lot of options here, but um, so, so pretty. Dorothy says, I'm making letter bead bracelets for my church. I The letter bead bracelets, guys, they're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. They are here and they are going to stick around. They are here so much so that like, we're talking about maybe doing some at um, bead fest, like as our little make and takes, like that's how popular they are. So, um, you know, if you've got letters or if you're looking for letters, there's actually some really beautiful silver letters, um, not the plastic ones, but like metal ones over on the art beads website. All right, moving on, moving on. Yeah, they do. And you can see they're not large hole like the pony bead ones are. These are like they're regular holes so they can they they don't wobble around on your beading wire or whatever material you're going to use. All right, I've got another one for you. I've got a bunch of these, but I, two left. We have two left of the true do it yourself. So this one is our Bali grapes. This one has a beautiful Bali grapes. I'm calling it grapes. It's not really grapes, but it is a Bali pewter charm. Absolutely beautiful. This has got a lot of weight to it. This was a, this is a very nice quality uh, Bali charm. That's, it's like I said, it's, it's a, it's got a little weight to it. And then I've got some fun beads to go with this one. And I was kind of feeling this like navy blue. So I don't know if you can tell, because looking at them from the side, they don't look navy blue. But these navy blue check glass rondelles, there are several of those. There are some extra metal beads, because who doesn't love little pops of metal? I love little pop of metal in my, my jewelry designs. And then the other beads for this are these beautiful cobalt blue. So again, more of that kind of navy. There are little drucks. There are some kind of uh, not really tan, not really yellow. It's this kind of weird in between color for these little check glass. And <clears throat> I was thinking you could take several of the little drops. Like you could get a really cool kind of Bali style necklace out of the beads here and i personally i would just string these up i don't know that i would wire wrap them because they're so small but i mean if you wanted to you absolutely could ochre yeah that is the perfect that's the perfect perfect color descriptor 100 percent. but i was definitely feeling like inspired by the bali charm and then this like deep blue that I thought was just so so pretty so you could do those you could make like um, a cluster if you wanted to hang your your charm from uh, you've got extra beads here you can really get creative with this one but I was kind of thinking necklace again with these true do-it-yourselves I just give you a little bit of inspiration but honestly it's up to you to kind of come up with whatever you want um, and use your own findings you can use your own beads you know you can add to it take away from it whatever you want to do but I do love the Bali charm. I think it's so, so pretty. All right. So moving on, we've got one more. Yes. Bead Fest in Lancaster. We're making our plans and hopefully uh, we'll be finalizing those very, very soon. And I will let you know as soon as that is, <laughs> as soon as those are done. All right. So this is our last this one is our check and ceramic. This one's got a little piece of uh, leather cord included. You you can do whatever you want to with this. It's a nice little piece in as far as like the diameter is concerned. Um, and then ceramic beads here as well as some check glass. So the ceramics most definitely will fit onto your leather, All right? And then I don't know that the rest of these will fit onto the leather, but you could wire wrap them. You, you could put them on, um, you know, head pins or eye pins or whatever you wanted to do. 
I know that this check glass will fit on here with a little wiggling. I don't want to cut somebody's piece of leather here, but this check glass square should fit. It should. It should fit. But you can always wire wrap it. So anyway, I loved the color palette here. The ceramics are kind of greenish blue with that kind of brown to them. Uh, and the check glass really kind of matched that. This is giving me ocean vibes. Like I would add, like if I had some like little like howlite turtles or just like some ocean charms, I most definitely <laughs> would add like some ocean charms to this. Probably use this guy as a dangle. Um, I don't know about which one I would use as a focal, though you could probably use both, right, to do two. Uh, you've got a little metal bead in here. You've got some check glass fire polish that are the same kind of blue-green. So you could put those with these beautiful, like, cream-colored rondelles, which I think are just so, so pretty. It's just such a nice color palette it really is and then you've got some of these like little saucer beads that are also in that beautiful blue green so again i'm kind of seeing like two strands here or just wire wrapping all of this onto the um the leather cord could make some little earrings if you wanted to and there's your leather cord. So the, the sky is the limit, right? I mean, you literally come up with anything. The color palette is just really, really nice, though. It's given me ocean vibes for sure. Like, I don't know how you feel about it, but it's, it's definitely making me crave summertime. <laughs> so, all right. Okay. Moving on to our kits that have the findings. So we now made it past the true do-it-yourselves. And we are moving on to the rest here. Okay, so now I'm going to start out, you guys, with a brace. I'm sorry, not a bracelet. I'm going to start out with a necklace. That is my favorite. I I love all of the things that are in today's show, but I love this necklace the most. So that's why that's what I'm going to start with. And I'm kind of worried about this one. And I'm worried about this one because it's in gold. And a lot of times when I do kits in gold, they don't sell very well. They will just sit. If I have a gold and a silver option, the silver will sell out. The gold will just sit there. This one only comes in the gold. Um, but I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. So this is our Wisteria necklace. And it is called that because... Our focal is beautiful wisteria. There's a little white kitty cat. Like it just is such a sweet, sweet little charm. And it's in gold color. It did not come in silver color. So gold is what we went with. So this is an asymmetrical design, but keep in mind, uh, you can put this together however you want to once you get this kit home. All right, so that is going to be our focal. And then I'm going to top that off with a prestige crystal bead in like this sweet kind of rosy purpley color like mauve almost so that's gonna go on the top of that okay then that is going to come up to a decorative ring because you guys know i love a good decorative ring all right one side of our necklace is going to be beautiful chain Okay, so that's going to go up that direction. We don't have to do anything to that. Then the other side of this necklace is a combination of really beautiful purple beads. So let me show you what I've got here, and then we'll put this together. The length of this is going to be leather cord. I'm going to turn on the fan. I'm getting hot in here. All right, so our, our beaded chain is going to be, there's an amethyst. There's a couple of soft purple faceted rondelles. There are some beautiful check glass uh, cathedral beads that are also in that same kind of rosy, mauvey, purple color. Okay, so we're going to build the rest of our chain here. So we are going to attach the rest of our beads. Let me set this off to the side now that you've got an idea of where we're going. Let's start with our beaded chain. So the beaded chain, this is one half of it. We're going to do the other half of it. So we are going to build out. this little, I'm going 
going to do my, and like I said, you can put this together however you want to, but I'm going to put my, all four of my cathedral beads in the middle, and then I'm going to put my amethysts on the outside edge. So totally up to you, right? If you want to mix and match that up a different way, you totally can. I'm going to use some eye pins and there are no jump rings in between here. So it is just going to be straight eye pins. So we're going to take our beads. We're going to thread those onto eye pins. We're going to use chain nose pliers. Okay, come in. We're going to bend the wire right where it is exiting the bead. Then we're going to come in with our cutter tool. Trim. And then we're going to come in with our round nose pliers. We're going to grab the wire and we're going to roll back to close our loop. So you've got loops on either sides, right? So if this is your first bead in the chain, you're going to do it exactly that way. Then if you've got as you're going, you're going to just open and close your loops with your pliers to attach them to each other. So you're going to open a loop that you've created with just a twist. Don't pull it apart. Just twist it, kind of walk it open. You're going to thread on the next bead and then you're going to use your pliers to twist and close that back. Okay. Just to keep that, that shape. All right. I'm going to open up this bead on the end, the loop thread on and then twist to close. Okay. Now I'm going to add one of our soft purple rondelles. Threading that on. All right. Now I need two more beads here to finish off our little chain. So we're going to go ahead and put those on to our rondelles or our eye pins. So that soft purple. And then come in, our chain nose pliers, in the wire, cutter tool to trim. And then you're going to use your round nose pliers to roll back. Okay, so there's that one. And then last but not least is going to be our amethyst. And again, the order that I've put these in, you can put yours together in whatever order you want. Okay. You don't have to do it this way. Shelly's got a question. Shelly is on YouTube. She says, if you use jump rings between the components, will the jewelry tangle less? And will it have more movement? Um, it really kind of is just dependent on the design, quite honestly. Um, sometimes I use jump rings in between them. Sometimes I don't. For me personally, the jump rings are less about tangling and more about adding length. Um, so if I only have a handful of beads and I really want to get like the longest amount possible, right, out of those beads, uh, I'll use jump rings in between just to create some added space. But that's not always necessary. I don't know that they necessarily help with tangling um, so much as just adding links, like I mentioned, um, or you know, giving, giving it a little bit more movement just because it has some more length. But again, it's really kind of design specific. Sometimes they're necessary and sometimes they're not. Uh, for this, this one in particular, I don't find that it is necessary. But if you wanted to make a longer necklace, pop and a jump ring in between each one of these is definitely an option. So Okay, so we've got our beaded chain here, which just so happens to be the same length as our regular chain, okay? So those are the two sides, right? We've got our left and our right, or right and left, whichever. Um, <laughs> I love that, Kim. You're so funny. <laughs> For our focal, we are going to do um, a, an eye pin here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and open up eye pin. I'm going to thread that onto the loop the top of our charm. And then I'm going to thread my beautiful Precios. I'm sorry, not Precios. This is, this is Prestige. Guys, I don't know if you know it or not, but, and I'm not supposed to say it out loud, but I'm going to Prestige. That's the name for the, uh, the big, the big crystals in Austria. You guys know the ones I'm talking about, the ones we're not supposed to, we're not supposed to say, but that's what that is. <laughs> You know, if you, you know, you know. Okay, so now I'm going to, and this is actually from their brand new spring collection. This one is called D Rose, if you're curious. All right, now I'm going to do a, um, a wrapped loop. So I'm going to bend the wire over the top of my pliers. I'm coming in with my round nose pliers. I'm going to go up and over 
why did they do that, Martha? I, I'm, I'm curious too. <laughs> yes, Gloria. Yes, Gloria, you nailed it. All right. And then I'm going to wrap between, <laughs> going to wrap between the loop that I created and the top of my bead, just kind of tidy up all of that. Okay. And then I'm going to come in with my cutter tool to trim off the excess. Okay. All right. So that is our beautiful pendant. It's going to hang from our decorative ring here. I'm going to use a jump ring to attach that. And then we're going to put the rest of this together. Okay. So there's that. All right, now I'm gonna put my beaded chain on one side and I'm gonna use jump rings here. So jump ring between two pairs of pliers, just walk it open. I'm gonna do my beads on this side, though it can be either side, it's totally up to you. Okay, then I'm gonna do my chain on the other side. Deborah says they are using Swarovski and high-end jewelry now. They have always been doing that. So they've always had two sections of their company, um, the hobby section and then the high-end jewelry section. I have I have a huge collection of Swarovski. And I don't know if you notice or not, but my watch is a Swarovski watch. I have several Swarovski watches, but this is one that I wear the most. Um, and yeah, they definitely wanted to kind of create some distance between the two. That's why they changed the name of the part in their hobby their hobby section. Um, but I, I don't know that it was, I don't know. I think it was kind of a, a silly move and I hope that they changed their minds and put it back the way that it was, but who knows? Okay. So for the length of this necklace, cause you can tell this is not quite long enough for a long, long necklace. I have included some beautiful leather cord here. You're going to double up your cord and you're just going to use some cord ends. Now for me personally, I, I put the clasp over here on the edge. You don't have to, you can actually cut this in half even more um, and, and put your clasp at the back. It is totally up to you, but I just wanna show you how to attach the, um, the cord ends to this because the one that I'm gonna use is already ready. But just for those of you who may not be familiar, um, yeah, we've got one too, Jan. We've got one in our mall. That's where I get a lot of my, a lot of my jewelry is from the one that's in our mall. All right. So you're going to take your two ends and you're just going to place them into the cord end. And you'll notice there's a little space there between them. That's fine. You can add a little bit of glue here if you want to. I don't know that it's necessary, but totally up to you if you feel like you need it. But then you're just going to use your pliers and you're just going to fold the edges over. So I like to do one, fold one over this way. And then I will fold the other one over. Don't let your cord hop out on you though. Flat nose pliers are nice for this. And then you've got, just be careful. Don't, don't smash it too hard because you'll cut through your leather cord. So just be mindful of that. But now you've got a loop on your ends that you can add your findings to. Okay. So, now I'm going to attach my, my leather to that. Okay. So my leather that I have ready to go. So I'm going to put a jump ring on this end. I'll go ahead and pretend like we attached our clasp here. <laughs> Let's just open up our jump ring and not our clasp because why not? Right. There's the clasp. And then I'm going to use another jump ring to go from my clasp into my leather section. And that goes all the way around and it's a double leather, right? It's doubled over and you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to. I just, I felt like one, one strand of the leather just wasn't quite balanced for this necklace, so I doubled it. 
And then I'm gonna close that back. And as always, I'll show you what the finished necklace looks like on the bust at the end, but you get kind of the general idea, right? So you've got your, your leather for your length and you've got your beautiful front here, which is asymmetrical. You've got your beautiful purples, your chain, and then of course your focal. Love this necklace so, so, so much. This was my favorite thing in the show. And like I said, I'm, I'm afraid that it's just going to sit in the shop because it's gold. A lot of people are really afraid to use yellow gold in their jewelry making. And I'm, I'm hopeful, but I'm kind of worried. <laughs> There's a lot of people don't, don't buy the kits that are in the gold color. Um, but this one just, it didn't, the charm was not available in silver. So gold it is. All right, going to set this to the side. I'll show you what it looks like when we get to the end of the show. Now I'm going to move on to a bracelet. And this bracelet is sort of a restock of a bracelet that we have done previously. Um, however, uh, it's a little bit different because I did not have access to some of the original beads. So this is just a single or a simple stringing project. There are some seed beads involved here. You've got two choices, though, when you go to check out. And that is about your clasp. You can either select the S hook clasp or you can select the lobster clasp that's got the heart on it. Okay, so you have to make that choice when you go to check out when you grab this bracelet. But uh, regardless of which clasp you pick, the, the bracelet goes together exactly the same way. All right, and it is using those beautiful rainbow druzies. I love them so, so much. There is, there or there are rather two beautiful check fire polish as well as our decorative check bead here. All right, so we are going to put this together. We're going to start out, thread on our crimp. We're gonna thread on our wire guardian. So we're going up through the wire guardian, back down through the wire guardian, and then we will be going down through our crimp. Okay. And then you want to be sure that your bead stringing wire is not crisscrossing inside your crimp. You're going to come in with your crimper tool. You're going to place that crimp into the back notch. And you are going to give that a squeeze. Then you're going to turn it sideways, put it into the front notch of the crimper tool just to make it a little bit more tidy and compact. And you're going to give that a squeeze. Give the tug test to make sure that it is nice and secure. And then you're going to come in with your cutter tool and you're going to trim off the excess beading thread. All right. Or beading wire rather. Okay. Now we are going to thread our beads on like so. I'm going to thread on a Chet Glass fire polish. I'm going to thread on a seed bead. I'm going to do one of the smaller druzies. Okay, and then a seed bead. So seed beads are gonna go in between each one. And I'm gonna do four of the smaller. So the druzies, you'll notice there are two really large ones and then there are eight smaller ones. So I'm gonna thread on four with of the smaller ones with the seed beads in between them. Okay. Then I'm going to thread on the two larger ones with seed beads in between those. Okay, then I'm going to thread on our check glass. Okay, and then another seed bead. I'm going to do four more. These are the smaller of the druzies. Okay. Is that a fish or an arrowhead? 
it is, and it's, it's not either one. <laughs> it's just a decorative. I, I mean, it's, I don't think that it's either one. I think it's just a pretty decorative bead. And I've actually got some more in the show in a different color. So if you like them, I think they're pretty cool. Um, but I don't, I don't think it's either one of those things. I think it's just a, a fancy bead. <laughs> All right. So our last druzy, and then we're going to finish off with a pink fire polish. All right. Now we're going to create a loop for our clasp. So what we're going to do now, okay, is we are going to thread on our crimp and then the rest of the seed beads. Okay. So I don't know how many there are here. It's just whatever was left over. I'm going to pick up all of those. And I've got a pair of matching earrings. If you want a whole set, the next thing I'm going to do is put together a, a kit that is a pair of earrings that goes with this. They look great separate. They look amazing together. So, all right. So there are all of our seed beads. Now I'm going to take that beading wire, be the bead stringing wire, and I'm going to go back down through my crimp. And what is going to happen is that's going to create a loop out of the seed beads when I pull out all of the excess slack here, right? And then I'm actually going to take my beading thread or my beading wire. I don't know why I have beading thread on the brain today. Uh, beading wire. And I'm going to go through my check glass bead and kind of pull from it. Okay, and then I'm going to come in with my crimper tool and I'm going to crimp. Yes, they do, Kim. They make wire guardians for really big. I've seen some very, <laughs> very big wire guardians for some large diameter uh, stringing materials. All right, so this is what we've got, right? Now you're going to attach your clasp and out of your choices, you're either going to have your um your decorative heart here and that's going to hook to this or you're going to use your s and your s is going to hook here i'm going to use the s uh, for our project here but either one looks absolutely beautiful so i don't think there's a i don't think there's a wrong choice when it comes to picking out which clasp you want with your kit and then there's an extra jump ring if you need an ex if you need any extra length. But there you go. How pretty is that? I love it. I love it. I love it. And I think either class would be absolutely beautiful. You guys know how I am obsessing over these um, these agate druzy beads right now. And some of them have like little openings in them where you can see on the inside. They're just so beautiful. And the color shift on them is absolutely stunning. So. There's the bracelet. I'm going to sit it to the side for a second because like I mentioned, I've got a pair of earrings that'll go with this that we can put together real quick. So these little earrings with more of those beautiful check glass beads and then the druzies on, and some of the check fire polish. What a pretty little set is that, right? Okay. So I'm going to put these together real quick. And these are easy peasy, easy peasy. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take our little check glass oval. We're going to thread it onto a headpin and we are going to create a wrapped loop. You can do a simple loop here if you want to, but I'm going to bend the wire over the top of the pliers. I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers. One up and over. Rotate, take the wire over to the other side, and then we are going to wire wrap in that space. Okay, I'm going to come in with my cutter tool, trim off the excess wire. Okay, and I'm going to thread that on to our large ring that we have. And then I'm going to go ahead and thread on an eye pin. And I'm going to close that back. And then on to our eye pin, we're going to do our druzy. Yeah. And then a bead cap. 
and our check fire polish and then another wrapped loop and these are done you're just going to add <laughs> you're going to add your ear wire so if you're looking for a cute little set guys don't forget mother's day is coming up very very soon so if you're looking for a set for a mother in your life your mother your friend who is a mother your grandmother if you're a daughter uh, I mean, if you are a mother and you want to give to your daughter because she's a mother, you know how it goes. <laughs> or if you just want a pretty set all for yourself. I, I don't judge. <laughs> I'm just saying that when it comes to sets, sometimes they make really nice gifts. You know what I mean? Um, and I don't always do sets. So when I do do them, I like to mention that, you know, having the whole set to give as a gift is a nice, a nice thing, but not necessary. I mean you know it's just cool sometimes i like to be matchy matchy and sometimes i don't just kind of depends does a dog mom count 100 percent, 100 percent, 100 percent, 100 percent. oh my all right so there are the beautiful little earrings to match the bracelet or you can just do one or the other totally up to you but i do think they make a cute little set if you wanted to yeah. grab those up both available in the Etsy shop. All right, moving on to the next. Moving on to the next. I got another bracelet for you. And then I'm going to finish off with two other pairs of earrings. So if you're curious as to how much we've got to go, this is where we're going next. All right, so I've got another fun bracelet project for you guys that I think is so, so pretty. This one is most definitely all about the beads. There is leather involved and a button because you know I do love a good button clasp with leather. But for me, this one is all about these beautiful, like, turquoise colored, I'm calling it teal. But yeah, and there's this beautiful little charm. I just got the jump rings stuck in my ring. All right, so this one is a beaded chain. Some of it is already done for you. And you can literally put this together however you want to. But I do want to point out some of the beads. All right, so we've got like these milky uh, turquoise teal greens rondelles. There's a check glass cube that is drilled like side to side. And so it sits kind of different. There are these beautiful teal check glass rondelles. And again, I'm not using jump rings in between. I have some larger kind of Picasso style check glass rondelles where I've put two onto an eye pin got a textured check glass and then I have these beautiful check glass flowers that have the AB finish to them okay so what you're seeing here is just a beautiful mix of check glass beads to create a beaded chain okay I also have some check glass drucks that I'm going to set to the side with my charm those are dangles okay the rest of this is a beaded chain using eye pins put it together in whatever order you want to um, it's, it's totally up to you, but I am going to attach my two check glass, my larger two check glass rondelles here on one end. So these are going directly after my dark teal check glass, right? So you can kind of see. And you can see I, I changed it up a bit. Like there's three beads on one eye pin. Then I did individuals. Then there's two beads on one eye pin. Like it's up to you to get creative with this. I'm going to put my textured check glass bead onto an eye pin. And do a simple loop with it. So just bending the wire. Coming in with my cutter tool. I'm going to trim off. Leaving myself about a fourth of an inch. Then I'm going to use my round nose pliers. Grab roll back so now i've got a loop on either side i'm going to attach that next to my rondelles twisting to open the loops and then twisting to close those loops back right all right and i'm going to do my little beaded chain of flowers three of them are all ready together i'm going to add one more so open Attach. and I put all of these on individual eye pins but you do whatever you want to do with these right if you wanted to add these to some of the rondelles you definitely could do that 
So this one, I feel like you could you could put together in so many different combinations. So everybody's bracelets might be different, which I think is kind of cool. Right. All right. And then I'm going to attach that down here on this end. And you can always refer back to the picture uh, if you need to have a refresher on on the order that I put these together in, uh, if you want to do it exactly the way that I did it, but you don't have to, like I said. All right, so there's our beaded chain. Okay. I kind of kept the heavier beads to one end. Okay, now <clears throat> I'm going to create my little dangles. So I've got one drop that I put on a head pin and gave it a wrap loop. I'm going to do one with you. So I've got two of those and then I'll show you how to put the rest of this together. All right. So coming in with my chain nose pliers, bend the wire. Coming in with my round nose pliers. Going up and over, rotate, take the wire over to the other side. And then wire wrap in that space. Come in with your cutter tool to trim off the excess. And you can do that with both of your little tiny druck beads. And then my little drucks, I'm actually going to put onto a jump ring here in just a second. But we need to do the leather section of this. Okay. So you'll notice we're going to tie a tiny, not a tiny, but a small loop, overhanded knot. Then we have a section that your button could fit into. A, an overhanded knot in another section where your button could fit into. So technically this is kind of an adjustable style bracelet because your button will fit in either one of these. I'm going to hang my dangles from one of these sections, but that doesn't stop me from using it to uh, use, attach my, my clasp, my button as well. Right. All right. So to get to that, what we're going to do is we're going to take our piece of leather here and we're going to take a jump ring, slide that jump ring to the middle. Okay. And then you're going to tie an overhanded knot. And that loop, I want that loop to be pretty small, right? I don't want it to be a big loop because I don't have to fit anything other than my jump ring here. Okay. Tighten that down. Then I'm going to come over just a little bit, about an inch. I'm going to tie another overhanded knot. Making sure that it is a big enough section for my button to fit through, which it will. And then I'm going to come over and I'm going to tie another overhanded knot. And you may need to use your pliers to grab the ends if it gets a little short on you, and that's fine. No shame in using your tools to pull that through. Okay. All right, so now I've got two sections here, like I mentioned, where the button will fit through. And I'm going to take this jump ring that I attached at the beginning I'm going to open it up and I'm going to attach it to one end of my beaded bracelet. And then I'm going to attach my button to the other end. And my button's already got one jump ring on it. I'm going to use two jump rings. If you need to adjust the length of your bracelet, this is a good section to do that. You can just use one jump ring instead, but my button's going over here on this end. Okay. And then I've got my dangles. And again, my dangles are going to go onto an eye pin. I mean, a jump ring. And I'm going to put them into this little section here. and my charm. So I have some dangles on here. I've got some beautiful beads. This is like 
all of the good things, <laughs> right? It's got all the things that we love. And then of course your button just slips through either one of these little openings. So you can really kind of adjust the length if you need a shorter bracelet, right? Go through this loop right here instead. But you've got your little charm and your dangles. Just a really pretty spring bracelet. Love that. Love this color. Really, really love this color. So there you go. And of course, the more you wear this, the softer this leather is going to get. So it's really going to kind of form to your body. But you guys know how it is with leather in the beginning. It's a little like it's a little. So I don't want to say that it's stiff because it's not. It's really supple and soft. But it definitely uh, will form to your body as you wear it. So 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 pretty all right i've got two things left and then we will be done today guys i've got two pairs of earrings quick and easy all right first up are our teal oval earrings look familiar i've got these in beautiful teal with that silver wash these check glass and got some little pieces of suede that you can punch a hole in and add your jump rings and a little metal bead. Now, that's kind of a long earring, so if you wanted to make it shorter, you absolutely can do that. As far as your suede is concerned, guys, you do have to punch your own holes in the suede. I, I recommend folding the edges over like so and then putting it into like a leather punch if you've got one. But if you don't have a leather punch, pin, take a safety pin. Go through both of them with a safety pin. Or... You can take a nail through it, or you can, um, what are your other options? A T-pin, you can use a T-pin to go through it. So you've got options. If you don't have a leather punch, it's okay. Don't feel like, oh, I can't buy those earrings that I really, really like because I don't have a leather punch. Uh, there's ways to get a hole through those, those leather ends, right? So you can see, just punched my hole through there. And I punched it through both. I'm, I messed up on that one, <laughs> which I knew I would do. Thankfully, I have this one. It's already ready to go. So this one's got the holes punched in it. We're going to take our bead. We're going to thread this. Gail says, this is such a good question. Gail says, do you ever use French wire? And if so, only on pearls? I don't understand the French wire. So originally, French wire was made just for pearls. Uh, well, I, I, I wouldn't say just for pearls, but I do feel like it was... Um, pretty pearl specific um however um i have seen it used in older like vintage pieces of jewelry uh over beading wire as well so basically your french wire is what was a wire guardian before wire guardians came along you know what i'm saying uh they invented the wire guardian to use in place of the French wire. So the French wire is just coiled sterling silver wire and very, very tiny. Um, and you use it to cover your cord to uh, reduce the abrasion uh, between your cord and whatever finding or metal or whatever. So with pearls, it was that was the one and only choice so that you could protect that silk cord. Uh, I think people started using those wire, uh, the French wire to cover their bead stringing wire as well and then that's when somebody stepped in and said you know what let's make a wire guardian so we don't have to cut our own wire uh, we can make it cheaper because it doesn't have to be sterling silver wire and i think that's how all of that came to be um so to answer your question i don't usually use it for anything except for pearls and i use it very rarely because i have access to um the uh the wire guardians so all right Kim says, is that the same as tiger tail? What are you asking me? What's the same as tiger tail? So um, bead stringing wire and tiger tail are very, very different. Um, there's there's some differences there for sure. I can't tell you just right off the top of my head. <laughs> but they are different things uh, for sure. They, they feel different. They behaved a little bit differently. So, okay. So I've taken my two... Uh, punched holes in my cord and I've just thread a jump ring on. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, thread on an eye pin, close that back. So now I have like a little drop here. I'm going to attach a jump ring to my bead. 
and then I'm going to hang that from my little suede drop as so. Now you can make these earrings go this direction or this direction. It is totally up to you. I'm making them so that they hang this direction and I'm going to thread on at this point, my little metal bead. I'm going to do a wrapped loop and add my ear wire and call it a day. I love these because they are so, so lightweight. I love a long earring that does not weigh a ton because I love big earrings. Uh, but again, if you need a shorter earring, you can cut your leather a little bit. You can leave out the metal bead on this. So you can really kind of alter this to make it whatever you need it to be. And of course, as I mentioned, you can uh, change the direction of your leather drop if you want to, depending on which way you want it to face, right? Up to you, totally up to you. All right, and then I'm going to add my ear wire. And these are done. They're so lightweight and so pretty. They're very boho or beachy. I like these a lot. Really, really pretty. All right, one more pair of earrings, and then we're done. And this is a, a really interesting little pair here. So these are our blue bell earrings. They have a Preciosa bicone and a check glass bell flower. I'm using a bell bead and some chain to create these cute little drops. All right. So first things first, we are going to, uh, let's wire wrap our flower. So we're going to thread that onto a head pin. I like to do the swirl around the top, but you can do a regular wrap loop if you want to, but I'm going to do the little swirl because it kind of makes it look like a bead cap. So I'm going to bend the wire right where it is exiting that bead. I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers up and over, rotate, take the wire over to the other side, and then I'm going to kind of roll that loop down to the surface of the bead. And it's off to the side just a little bit. I'm okay with that going to take the wire and I'm going to wrap around the base of that. And then I'm also going to wrap it around the top of my bead. So it looks like I'm giving it a little bead cap. Okay. Come in with my cutter tool. I'm going to trim off the excess. Okay. Then I am going to take a very small jump ring here. And I'm going to attach it to the end of one of the chain pieces in your kit. I'm going to thread that chain through the bail bead. Okay. And then I'm going to attach the other end of the chain to that jump ring. Probably a much easier way to do this. <laughs> Leave it to me to uh, make this as difficult as possible. I'm not really trying to. Probably should have just left the jump ring off. Okay, hang those like that and attach the ends with the jump ring. There we go. Let's not make things harder on ourselves than we need to. So you're just going through the two end links of the chain. Okay, and then you're going to attach your bead. And you're going to close that back. So there is your beautiful little drop. You're going to take an eye pin. You're going to open up your eye pin. Whoops. With a twist. You're going to attach that to the loop on your little bell bead. Close this back. And then you're going to thread on your Preciosa bicone. And you're going to do a wrapped loop and add your ear wire. And these are done. These are really, really pretty. And again, very lightweight, nice for um, the hotter, hotter weather. So I don't know about you, but sometimes if I have on too much jewelry or it's heavy, I get overstimulated uh, and then I get really hot and sweaty and the jewelry just doesn't help if it's heavy. So I feel like in the warmer months, the lighter the jewelry, the more likely I am to wear it all day long. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, trim that. 
and then we're just going to add our ear wire to it. These are so pretty. So, so pretty. Got a little sparkle, a little flower. Very cute. Love those. Love, love. All right, guys, that's it. I'm going to turn you around. We're going to speed through our pieces for the day and then i'm going to let you guys go just for a little bit though because i will be back at 4 p.m eastern time over on the art means website because we were talking about swarovski this is a swarovski necklace i i i collect my mom and i both collect uh swarovski jewelry from from actual Swarov, swarovski <laughs> um so yeah um kind of familiar with the with the Swarovski. I still don't understand why they needed to make that change, but I mean, whatever, I guess. Okay, so the first thing that I showed you guys today was our beautiful Wisteria necklace. So that is our necklace here with our uh, prestige, you guys know. Uh, our sweet little charm here, our pendant rather with the Wisteria and the cat. And then the beads going up the side, the chain. And then, of course, it is uh, leather for the length part of it. And if you need a, a shorter necklace, you can obviously cut that, um, that leather. All right. Then we had a couple of bracelets here. So on the top of my stack here, we had our teal check glass. Lots of different kinds of check glass in this one. And then, of course, we have our button clasp. We've got our little charm with our, that looks like a fern leaf and some little drucks. Really, really pretty bracelet that you can stack with others. We had our rainbow druzy. I cannot get enough of these druzy beads. So this little bracelet where you could either get the S hook or the heart hook. And then there were some earrings that matched if you wanted to have like a little matching set super super cute and we had our little suede earrings here with that teal drop i love these super cute and then last but not least for the ones that we just put together with our little bluebell we got a little sparkle little flower again lightweight super cute nice nice all right guys that is it for our Feel Good Friday show. I hope that you have enjoyed. Thank you everybody who has made a purchase that helps me keep the lights on here and keeps me being able to give you all of this content. Um, and uh, those of you who have joined Patreon, thank you so, so much. I am just, I cannot be more excited about anything. The, the Patreon is just, it's it's blowing up. I'm so excited. So uh, thank you to all our new Patreon members. Thanks for that, guys. Don't forget, guys, to set, or to set your reminders for 4 p.m. Eastern for my Art Beads Live. We are putting together some bird's nest earrings for Mother's Day. And just a quick little hint. I have an extra special. <laughs> Evil genius. Um, I have an extra special uh, live coming up on Monday on Art Beads at 6 p.m. Eastern. So set your reminders for that for the clearance sale that is going on. If you guys remember, I did a clearance sale with them not too long ago, Warehouse Clear Out. Got another one coming up for you. So I've got some great items that'll be in that show. And that is an extra show because I normally just do Fridays. So um, keep that in mind. And I will mention that again during the Art Beats Live later on. Thank you guys so much for joining me this afternoon. I hope to see a lot of you later. If not, have an amazing weekend. And I will see you next week on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern for our regular live. I will be with Rachel. And we are unboxing Sam's bead box for the month and putting together a gorgeous bracelet. So I hope to see you then. Have a great afternoon. Bye, guys.